Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, and welcome to our Year 2 Summary of the Daily Do Our Daily Stardew Valley Let's Play on the channel where every day in game is a day in real life. If you're new here, I suggest you go and take a look at the Year 1 Summary because we're hopping in here on episode 113 which is day one of spring and it has been an absolute wild ride we're, we've actually recorded we've gone through year two 224 episodes of the daily do here on the channel and we're running for year three so we're gonna have over 300 episodes on the channel it'll be 336 episodes on the channel very soon those are gonna be coming at you quickly as the year progresses we're all the way in august now it's been a great time it's been a great year so far and you know we gotta celebrate together so if you're looking forward to more daily do do let me know down below leave a like subscribe if you're new watch that other video it'll tell you so much of what we did in the first year how far we got and now where we are today so let's get in there and start with day one so our first day of year two is pretty well how you'd imagine it went. You know, we we started by planting all of our spring crops. And, uh, you know, that included 146 cauliflowers, some coffee, potatoes, and some beans. On day two, we went mining for gold to upgrade our watering can. You know, we're striving to get those tools upgraded and the watering can will help us support planting more crops and making life easier on the farm. On day three, we dropped our watering can off to Clint for that sweet, sweet upgrade. And we went and did a quest for Marnie, caught a wood skip and witnessed everybody slamming back Gus's big ol' omelet in the tavern. We just walked in and they were all just going to town on that. On day four, we planted mossy seeds and cleaned up our tree tapping area. You know, we went mining to finish the day off. On day five, we picked up our watering can from Clint, but most importantly, we finished up the safe room and repaired the bus stop. And since we can now water things with more ease, we planted some mixed crops to add to the bunch. On day six, we made use of that new bus stop and we went to Calico Desert and went into the Skull Cavern for the first time time you know we're, we're adventurers here why not we also caught the sand fish and bought some seeds as well from sandy on day seven we finished up the fish tank bundle dropped an apricot off to emily celebrated mayor lewis's birthday and from mr chi we also set up our very first iridium sprinkler in the greenhouse on day eight we opened up some geodes and went to the calico desert again we got ourselves the Galaxy Blade and even found some dinos lingering around in the Skull Cavern. On day nine, we did our big garlic harvest and then replanted a bunch of kale. Kale's so easy to harvest, come on, why, why not? We also finished a quest for Pierre and got a new one from Robin. And to end off the day, we planted more trees in our orchard, adding on apples and pomegranates. On day 10, we went back to the Skull Cave after building and placing some lightning rods. On day 11, we donated to the museum, went to Robin, and got the upgrade for our deluxe coop started. We also had a cutscene with Willy and found the Golden Lewis statue. On day 12, we finished Robin's quest, bought the recipe for triple espresso, and encountered a windstorm at the end of the night. On day 13, we did a mad dash harvesting all of our cauliflower, and then ran to the Calico Desert to buy rhubarb seeds. We then managed to run to the egg hunt with moments to spare, and of course, we won that egg hunt again two years in a row. And of course, it was obviously a very profitable day, selling all the cauliflower off. Day 14, we finally saw the effects of the windstorm and saw the big tree that had been downed by Marnie's and the need to repair it. We also bought two rabbits and can now upgrade the barn for pigs and sheep. On day 15, we harvested and replanted kale and had a cutscene with Pierre. But most importantly, it was day one of three of the Desert Festival. So we went over there to see what that was all about. On day 16, we went back to Calico Desert again for the Desert 
festival. And while we didn't reach level 30 as the people wanted us to, we did use a bunch of explosives and got a red slime egg and some iridium bars. On day 17, we had a cutscene with Leah, followed by one with the bear. We then went to the desert festival for the last day and bought some strawberry seeds and then got knocked out in the skull cavern because why wouldn't we? <laughs> On day 18, we got Robin to upgrade our barn went to visit Grobus, visited the wizard, worked on some lighting, made more furnaces, and then passed out on our bedroom floor, because one day just wasn't good enough. On day 19, we got a duck feather for the first time, and we used it to finish the dye bundle. We also planted some carrots, made some torches, and set up some lampposts. On day 20, the barn upgrade was complete, so of course we bought ourselves a sheep and a pig. We then went to the desert and almost died in the Skull Caverns again, and we bought a bunch of starfruit seeds for summer from Sandy. On day 21, we harvested crops, got some hardwood, did not one, but two quests for Pierre, and planted some mixed crops, and we used corn to make some oil. On day 22, we set up more paths and planted some carrots. We also made some more oil, planted new things in the greenhouse, and of course we ended the day by passing out before making it to our bed. Spring is not going well for us when it comes to sleeping. On day 23, we got an achievement for cooking 10 different recipes, made a new sprinkler, sorted some chests, chopped down a weird tree, and then planned for summer. On day 24, we experienced our second flower dance, asking Leah to be our dance partner. We also harvested enough leeks for Evelyn's quest for George and got our very first ancient fruit. On day 25, we had a cutscene with Evelyn and then one with Caroline, unlocking cookies and tea trees in one day. We also fished a little and got some hardwood for further construction. On day 26, we got a coffee machine from Evelyn as a result of completing her quest, which gives us coffee every single morning. We visited Marty to get some shears, had a cutscene with Pierre, organized some stuff, and had a massive rhubarb harvest. On day 27, we harvested a few more things, did a couple of quests, sorted some chests, and repaired the stump by Marnie's. On day 28, the last day of spring, we dropped off our trash can for Clint to upgrade, bought some more starfruit seeds, prepared for summer, and bought the star drop from Krobus. Day 29, we had our first day of summer, year two. We planted over 200 starfruits as we aim to make a whole lot of money this summer. We also planted some other seeds, such as blueberries, corn, and red peppers. Emily also paid us a visit, and we can make clothes now, even though to this day I have not made clothes. <laughs> Over day 30 and 31, we did some more basic early season things, such as planting more crops and harvesting our first ancient fruit of the season, and running over to the quarry. On day 32, we went to the Skull Cavern and finally made it past level 25. On day 33, we visited the raccoons, gave our sweet gem berry away, got some iridium sprinklers, cleaned up the farm some more, and then passed out because just like spring, we gotta pass out a few times. On day 34, we bought some auto grabbers from Marnie, started construction on a mill, and made two more iridium sprinklers. We also picked up our upgraded trash can from Clint. On day 35, we dropped off Pam's sweet potato juice. Come on, Pam, we all know it's vodka. And then we cut down a bunch of trees. <laughs> on day 36, we did some work around the farm and went mining for some gold. On day 37, we moved around the crab pots, then went to the Calico Desert where we promptly died and lost several items, namely losing 39 coffees due to negligence. <laughs> My bad. On day 38, we moved a few things around the farm, opened up a bunch of geodes, and donated stuff to the museum. On day 39, we celebrated the luau, and then we passed out after failing to water all of our crops, because again, what summer without passing out a bunch? On day 40, we did some harvesting, went to the Skull Cavern, and brought back 109 starfruit seeds from Zandy. 
On day 41, we fixed up the greenhouse layout and finally removed those pesky beans we've been dealing with. We also finished up the chef's bundle in the community center, did some more sorting and got some hardwood. On day 42, we got some green rain. It was a green rain day for the first time. I've never seen this before. This was an experience. Uh, we also had a massive harvest as well, harvesting our first batch of star fruit, some melons, blueberries, and coffee all in one day. And we also accidentally picked up another hundred star fruit seeds because, you know, I can't remember what I do. And uh, we replanted over 200 star fruit seeds, planting more than our first harvest. On day 43, we had so many cutscenes. Um, you know, cutscenes with Sebastian, Abigail, Willie, and Clint. We also gave a whole bunch of coffee away, purchased our house upgrade from Robin, and gave a bouquet to Leah, who's now our girlfriend. On day 44, we had a cutscene with Mary Lewis and Marnie talking about their secret love that we, we all know. We, we all know. We know. And we also had a cutscene with Ailey. We delivered some goods and tried to get a sea jelly as well. On day 45, we made a smoker and smoked some green. We also got another small delivery box so we can put that in the mine. On day 46, we made some new sprinklers and then went to the Adventurers Guild to get our copy back. From the time we died in the mines, I had completely forgotten that this was a feature and this was great. Although it did cost me money and I was not happy, but it's fine. And then we put that extra shipping crate in the mines. On day 47, we started Robin on another upgrade to our home. We just can't give her any peace. We gave Demetrius some coffee for his birthday and invited Linus to live on our farm, who declined, of course. And then we also went to the Skull Cavern. On day 48, we had a cutscene with Clint and Emily and then went to the Skull Cave. On day 49, we ran around a bit, did some fishing and some prep for the Skull Cavern like making a tent kit and some stairs. On day 50, Robin finished up our basement and we got to play with casks for the very first time, adding wine, cheese, mead, and ale to them. On day 51, we went to the Skull Cavern. Again, a common theme. We also came out with some solid profit, even though we only made it down to level 34. On day 52, we ran around the farm, got more ancient seeds, and prepared for fall. On day 53, we prepared for the Skull Cavern some more, bought a bunch of extra summer seeds to store for next year, and we planted some extra wheat to prevent the need to retill once fall comes. And we also had a cutscene with Harvey. On day 54, we went to the Skull Cavern and came out with minimal profit because it do be like that sometimes. On day 55, we bought some desert totems, ran to open some geodes, went mining, and had our final starfruit harvest of the season. On day 56, we got ourselves a bunch of wood and saw the moonlight jellies again, celebrating the final day of summer as we move into fall. Day 57, we had our first day of fall, buying new seeds and getting some planting done. On day 58, we finished our planting, but most importantly, we finished the community center. It took us ages, but we got it. We, we're there now, it's done. On day 59, we had our community center celebration where everybody came together, balloons in the air. Everyone was so happy. This is the culmination of years of labor and work. We also did some normal things like uh, making crab pots and some oil makers. And we also saw the downfall of Joja Mart. On day 60, we prepped for a shed and messed up a few things, leading to another rather uneventful day. But we also got a ton of recipes in the morning from all of the good work we did in the relationship building from finishing the community center. On day 61, we built a new shipping box on the farm, messed up Elliot's birthday, spoke to Willie about his boat, and got Robin to build us that shed. We also took some time to cook up some recipes too as we worked towards finishing the recipe book. On day 62, we went into the Skull Cavern, profiting quite a bit and making a bunch of new bombs. On day 63, we made some coffee and then went down to the Skull Cavern all the way to level 37. And at the end of the day, we also saw the decrepit Joja Mart get struck by lightning. And now I think we all know that means there's a new bundle in town. On day 64, we made it to level 100 
in the Skull Cavern, meeting Mr. Chi at the bottom, and, you know, maybe he, he wasn't too thrilled with our, our performance, but we, we did what we could, you know, we got there, we're clever, he called us clever, so we're good. On day 65, we upgraded our pickaxe, cooked up a bunch of iridium, and did some housekeeping, cutting down a bunch of trees. On day 66, we opened up our geodes, went to Joja Mart for the new bundle, and we rearranged some stuff in the house. On day 67, we finally got enough muscles for our raccoon friends who wanted five, but, you know, they had to be the same quality. I had so many muscles. And then we had a cutscene with Jody and Kent. And then two back-to-back -back with Emily. <laughs> we also bought some more crab pots from Willy. On day 68, we had many cutscenes again. <laughs> We're having a lot this year. Uh, we opened up the path to the witch and caught our very first legendary fish, the mutant carp. On day 69, we caught another legendary fish, the angler. And we then gave the goblin his void mail and continued the wizard's quest line. On day 70, we had a pumpkin harvest, did Gus's quest, had a cutscene with Abigail, and went mining. On day 71, we prepped for the fair, got some hardwood, saw Sandy for her birthday, caught the scorpion fish in the desert, and did a whole bunch of cooking. On day 72, we went to the Stardew Valley Fair, and of course, we won that again, because why wouldn't we? Uh, there was no bribing happening at all. We didn't bribe Mayor Lewis like we did last year. On day 73, we repaired the boat in Willie's shop, and also did some mining. On day 74, we got our first big crop, a pumpkin. I think it's the first time I've ever gotten any big crop across playing Sturdy Valley multiple times. So, go us. We also tried to celebrate Marnie's birthday, but she was nowhere to be found. And then I was later told that she was probably getting a checkup done. We also caught a bunch of eels and then spoke to the raccoon to see what else they need. And we had a cutscene with Abigail and... Caroline. On day 75, we went to Ginger Island for the first time, exploring the island and meeting some folks before using a tent kit for the first time as well, sleeping on the ground, because that's what we do here. On day 76, we woke up on Ginger Island and managed to unlock the forge by going through the volcano. We also talked to Birdie for the first time who was fishing in the west coast. On day 77, we found out Leo's name, found and rescued Professor Snail, and found some more golden walnuts as well. Day 78 marked the final day I was staying on Ginger Island. We did explore a little bit more and did some fishing, but then we returned home to take care of things that we were neglecting on the farm. On day 79, we collected all of our crops and animal products, donated things to the museum, and got ourselves a void salmon. Day 80 was a little bit of a mess. We went around town back and forth over and over again. And we also started a new quest line with Mr. Chi. On day 81, we went to Calico Desert to get some beet seeds and then went to Ginger Island to plant them because we need them for Mr. Chi's quest. Plus, we got some more bones, getting us even closer to completing the fragments of the past quest that has been so elusive all these years. On day 82, we worked on that quest again, fragments of the past, and we also completed the skeleton murdering quest for the Adventurer's Guild. On day 83, we collected the rest of the bones for our quest. We also went hunting for the fourth war scroll and celebrated the updated Spirit's Eve with a far more complicated maze than years past. On day 84, we did some cooking, delivered the bones from our quests, and hunted for Dwarf Scroll 4. All before passing out on our home, really marking out the end of Fall Year 2. Day 85 marked the first day of winter, Year 2, and I couldn't think of a better way to start this season than by opening up some geodes and upgrading our house, as we don't really need it in winter. We also did some sorting and some cooking, but most importantly, we caught ourselves a sturgeon for the caviar we need. On day 86, we tried to find pineapple seeds to no avail, and we also caught ourselves the legendary glacier fish and chopped down a bunch of trees for building chests. On day 87, we collected those beets for Mr. Cheese Quest and started to rearrange our storage. 
we also accidentally changed the color of our house. On day 88, we completed another portion of Mr. G's quest, involving some beets and, uh, you know, a certain mare's fridge. I also bought the furniture catalog and finally started to decorate the house. It only took me two years. On day 89 and 90, we decorated the house some more, really cleaning it up, making it look super pretty, making it personal, making it nice. And then we also fenced some raccoons and started fixing up our shed. On day 91, we celebrated Caroline's birthday and made some significant progress on Birdie's quest line. We also had a cutscene with George and then another with Elliot. We also went to Calico Desert to finish Mr. G's quest and we even got to sort some things at the end of the day. On day 92, we finished the more storage and then went to the ice fishing festival, which of course we won again with minimal bribes. On day 93, we collected our watering can from Clint and we also completed Birdie's quest line. And then we went off searching for pufferfish for Demetrius because that quest line has been sitting there for far too long. On day 94, we caught the puffer fish for Demetrius, celebrated Sebastian's birthday, and then went hunting for prismatic slimes. On day 95, we found the last dwarf scroll, finally, and found the prismatic slime for the wizard, a truly amazing day. On day 96, we delivered the dwarf scroll to the museum and our prismatic jelly to the wizard. We also used fairy dust on our caviar and finished the bundle at the abandoned Jojo Mart. And then finally, we went to Squid Fest and got seven fish before passing out. On day 97, we used a rain totem for the first time, had a cutscene with Sebastian, upgraded our shed, and caught three new fish, catching a slime jack, lava eel, and a midnight carp. We also leveled up our fishing skill to the max, thus getting all skills to level 10 and unlocking a lovely little achievement. On day 98, we ran around and got some walnuts, proposed to Leah, and tried catching some fish. Between day 99 and day 100, we caught a goby and a stonefish. We also visited the mastery cave to see what we can unlock, and then we went to the night market both nights. On day 101, we got married to Leah, and uh, yeah, I didn't know how the cutscene was gonna work, so uh, there, there I am just wearing uh, overalls and the regular fit. Didn't get ready at all for her, so, you know, sorry, Leah. Uh, we also had a cutscene with Harvey and caught the ice pip, and we missed out on what was 100% uh, an octopus at the uh, night market in the submarine. On day 102, we did some cooking, had a cutscene with Krobus and the dwarf who, you know, apparently they don't like each other very much. And then we went to the movies with Krobus to uplift his spirits. On day 103, we finished the grub quest for Clint. Uh, completely legitimately, I didn't spend the last few days running over to Krobus's lair and, and killing grubs there. No, 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 we did those in the cave. We also finished the Dougie's monster slayer goal and went to Ginger Island to plant over 100 ancient fruits. On day 104, we went to Ginger Island and repaired the farmhouse. Now we've got somewhere to sleep on Ginger Island and we don't need to go home all the time. And we also found several walnuts as well. On day 105, we went fishing for the octopus again, missing two, and we also unlocked the toad frog guy on Ginger Island who wants us to plant some melons. On day 106, we finally caught the octopus. We also visited the bookseller, took the dwarf to the movies, and delivered more items to the raccoons. On day 107, we finally got ectoplasm, and oh my goodness, that was a difficult thing to get. You know how many times I've done this quest? After multiple attempts, we were finally able to complete it and, uh, you know, get that off our, off our back. We also made some more pineapple seeds with the harvested pineapples that we've gotten. On day 108, we delivered the ectoplasm to the wizard, finally finishing that horrible, horrible quest line. Those poor ghosts. We got our first mastery, and then we had a cutscene with Alex and Mayor Lewis, planted our mystic seeds in Ginger Island, and went into the volcano. On day 109, we celebrated the Feast of the Winter Star, giving Gus a coffee as a present, and Haley 
giving us an emerald. This is just funny because last year Gus gave us a gift and we gave Haley a gift. Also last year I got a ruby. So keeping it the same, no tea set for us. And then we also replaced our animal fence with hardwood. On day 110, we harvested almost a full greenhouse worth of ancient fruit for the first time. And then we went to Ginger Island to explore the volcano some more and ended the day being prepositioned to start a family. On day 111, we set up our mini obelisks on the farm, making it easy to travel from our house to the animals. We also opened up all of our geodes and mystery boxes, donating three new things to the museum. We then went to Ginger Island to explore the volcano some more. On day 112, we prepared for spring, ending off our second year on the farm. And what a wild and productive year it was, going to Calico Desert, finishing the community center, going to Ginger Island, getting married, finishing all those quests. It was a really productive year. We got so much more done in year two than I was expecting. And I'm really excited for year three as we move forward and continue rolling through and getting more stuff done as we strive towards perfecting the game in a somewhat casual manner. <laughs> and it certainly wouldn't be possible without you folks down there in the comments, you know, egging me on, telling me the secrets, telling me what to do. All the things I've learned from you folks down below have made this journey so easy and so fun and I'm glad to be sharing it with you. So I'm really looking forward to year three on the farm. If you folks have enjoyed so far, do let me know down below. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and as always, thank you for stopping by. Happy you did. And for this series, I'll see you tomorrow.